Hi, and welcome to a second tutorial geared towards foundation and fraud, IGCSE and GCSE revision. Now, the first of the five questions that I'm going to look at is a geared, geared around a circle and circle formulae. Okay, so your circle formulae are that um, the area of a circle is pi r squared and the circumference of a circle is pi d, pi times diameter, or alternatively, uh, 2 pi r. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, 2 pi r. Okay, so as soon as we see a circle problem, we should have those at the ready. Uh, let's look at the question here. Calculate the perimeter of this semicircle. Now, the perimeter is the outside length of it, isn't it? So what we're going to have to find is this curved arc length here. And we're also going to have to find and add to it uh, this diameter. Well, to be honest, we already know the diameter, don't we? It's 12 centimetres. So the perimeter is going to be 12 centimetres plus half of a circumference, okay, which is this arc length, half of the circumference of the full circle. This is only a semicircle. So it looks like we're going to need this formula, aren't we? Okay, now I actually don't know the rate. Well, I do know the radius, but right in front of me is the diameter. Okay, that's the, the longest length across the circle going through the center. Okay. Um, so the circumference, if it were a full circle, would be pi times 12, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, so this half of the circumference would be pi times 12 divided by 2. Yeah. Okay, let's just divide everything by 2. Um, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so that's 6 pi. Yeah. So the 6 pi is the length going all the way around there. 6 pi, and I guess it's in centimetres as well. Um, okay, so the perimeter, in terms of pi, wants us to have pi in the answer. The perimeter is equal to 12 plus 6 pi centimetres. We can put it in brackets if we like, show that it's all one thing. Okay. Great, okay, question two. Um, now we're faced with a triangle. Now you, I might ask you what type of triangle, to be honest, because they're both X's, they're both equal, aren't they? So that would be a nice isosceles triangle, which means that this length and this length are equal. Is that relevant? Let's have a look. We have to find the value of X. It's interesting, but it's not quite relevant for this question. Um, what we're gonna need to bear in mind is what these three angles add up to in a triangle. And we know, we all know, the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So x plus x, these two angles, plus 2x minus 20 must be equal to 180 degrees. And it's just a, now an equation that I've set up that I need to solve. I'm going to gather up any like terms here. So I've got 2x plus x plus x, 2x, 3x, 4x here. Okay, subtract 20 still equals 180, but you can see that, so we've got four x's there. And now I just need to rearrange to make x a subject. So the first thing I would do is add 20 to both sides, and that will leave me four x here on its own, and 20 added to, this, added to this side is 200. And then the final step is just to divide by four to get 50 degrees, yeah, okay, you see that? Perfect, okay, so we've, we've answered the question, we've found the value of x, let's go. Um, right, next question. This is a good one. The probability of a bus being late on any day is 0 0.2. James get, gets the bus on Monday and Tuesday. This is the probability that both buses are on time. Now then, we have a, a nice uh, strategy for doing this. As soon as you see your sort of two events, like Monday or Tuesday, or if it's a bag of marbles, it's pick one, pick two. It's a classic tree diagram question. Okay, um, So we could be late. And we could be on time, we could be late, we could be on time, we could be late, we could be on time. Let's structure this first and talk through it. This is Monday, so on Monday we can be late or on time. If we're late on Monday, on Tuesday, we could go on to be late or on time. And if we were on time on Monday, we could go on to be late or on time. And it says that the probability on any day is 0 0.2 of being late. So 0 0.2 is our probability of being late. Now if our probability of being late is 0 0.2, 20%, what's the chance that we're on time? Well, that's got to be then one subtract 0 0.2 or, you know, 20% chance of being late. There's an 80% chance or 0 0.8 chance we're on time. Okay. Now, the big trick here, the thing to remember with tree diagrams is we always multiply going across the tree diagram, always. Okay. So I'm looking for two independent events here and um, the probability of 
being, what is it, on time, on time. So on time followed by on time. It's this route here, let's highlight it. So tie on time, on time, let's go. Uh, on time followed by on time. And I'm gonna multiply those probabilities that I can see there. So it's gonna be 0 0.8 multiplied by 0 0.8 which I can put into my calculator and find 0 0.64. Is there a 64% chance that both buses are on time on Monday and Tuesday? Okay. Great. Okay, let's look at this one. Another good question. Um, often you get a diagram and what's underneath will basically explain what's in the diagram. So what I can see here is CE, this line here, and FI are parallel lines. And I can see that from the arrows. I can also see that angle, where is it? E, D, H is 50, and D, G, F is 100. So all I have to do is just look at this and it's explained underneath. Some people might think that's unnecessary, but it's just making extra clear, okay? Show giving reasons that triangle D, G, H, so where's that? D, G, H, so this one here in the middle is isosceles. Now we've already established earlier on in this lesson that an isosceles triangle has base angles that are equal, okay? So that's what I think we're looking for because we've got angles given and I'm sure we can use our knowledge of angle rules to work out um, other angles, especially, well, this is a good starting point, isn't it? Because I can see that glaring at me. We've got 100 degrees here. We know the angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. This must be 80, okay? Um, so show giving reasons. So I could say, first of all, angles on a straight line. Add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, um, angle DGH is 80 degrees. Okay. Reason one. Um, and then we could say, right, okay, I can see a Z angle or it's called an alternate angle. Yeah, okay, because I've got parallel lines. And um, so I think I can say angle GDC and angle, um, what's this one, FGD are alternate and therefore equal to 80 degrees. Then I've got another angle on a straight line, haven't I? So I can find that one. That adds up to 130, so that one would be 50. Okay, so I've got another angle on a straight line here. I've kind of run out of room here, but you, you know, I'd write that down again. Say that angle GDH is 50. Okay, so angle GDH is 50. And therefore, I can find this one here, because I've got 50 and 80. I know the angles in a straight, uh, angles in a triangle In a triangle, add up, excuse the handwriting, it's terrible today, 180 degrees. <laughs> Therefore, GHD, so angle GHD is 50 degrees. Uh, and now I've just shown that I've got, I've got two angles in that triangle that are equal to each other. So um, these two, these two are 50 degrees. 50 degrees base angles are equal therefore it's an isosceles triangle isosceles yeah okay good all right so i hope that's clear and you can see you know if they're both equal then that side would actually be equal to that side in that triangle and last but not least a nice quick one um standard form i hope you can do this um, if it's just a number like this with zeros, you know, it's not, it's just a single digit that's not zero, a okay, single integer here, five, then all we have to do is count the zeros here, okay? Just as an aside, if it had been, um, you know, 5,000, uh, sorry, 54,000, and we are asked to put that into standard form, it would be 5.4. And then, of course, we would, we would also count the four in counting up the zeros because it's after the decimal place, so one, two, three, four, so it be 10 to the power four, okay? With this one, it's much more straightforward. When it's a small number that you're putting into standard form, all you need to do is literally count the zeros. So um, there'd be four, the four and the three, and there's three of them, so it's to the power negative three. 
Okay, so there's five more questions. I go quite quickly through them, so hopefully you're able to follow all of that. Please let me know how you're finding these. Um, if you want me to do more, let me know. And I'm really happy to take requests also. So let me know what you want. And don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your teachers about my channel. And have a great day.